What is going on, everybody? And welcome to the culmination of my Saw coverage for now. So we had Saw X release in theaters a couple of weeks ago. I was fortunate enough to check it out about a day early. <laughs> I wish it was a little earlier than that, but about a day early at Fantastic Fest. I wasn't expecting much out of the movie. Really enjoyed it. So I've had a bit of Saw fever here lately. So I've ranked the films. I ranked all the twists. I ranked all the villains. And now the piece de resistance. We have the ranking of every single trap in the Saw franchise, which by my count is 78 traps. Now, there's other tests. There's other games in the, the mostly small ones in the franchise that I'm not covering here because they don't really deal with a trap per se. So there is a bunch of different things to go over here. Needless to say, there's some that I'm going to go into a little bit more in depth, ones that I have more passionate thoughts on. There's quite a few of them that I'm just going to quickly briefly explain why I'm sticking it where I'm sticking it and then moving on to not be here for four hours. And for this tier list, we have five categories that I'm going to be ranking these traps off of. Now, the bottom one, you call that a test, are ones that are traps that I think are lame or traps that I think are extremely easy to survive. Breaking the rules, which are traps that are maybe interesting or cool, but they don't exactly follow the Jigsaw code, and Jigsaw himself certainly broke his own rules once in a while. Forever Scarred are traps that I'm just fine with. They're okay. There's nothing overly interesting about them. They're just, they're good. You know, the people can get out if they want to, but they're going to be Forever Scarred. Kill Me Now are the ones that are just absolutely mind-numbingly painful. Ones that you're like, please, God, do not put me in that trap. Among the cooler ones, more memorable ones in the franchise. And then Game Over, obviously being the top tier, is the ones that I, are not only my favorites, but more traditionally are going to be the ones that I think fit the original concept the best, where you have somebody in a very painful trap that thematically fits whatever they're being punished for, and there's actually a chance that they could survive or escape this test. And there's not as many of those in this franchise as you would think. And going along with that criteria that I just laid out, I'm also going to be putting my favorites starting from left to right. So every single one of these tiers, the ones that I'm putting in the leftmost side of the, the row is going to be my favorite of that category and then descending all the way down to my least favorite. So we're going to be talking about quite a few different versions of ranking these traps all wrapped up into one sexy ass blood filled video. But really quick before we kick this thing off, being stuck between the two terrible worlds of poor quality earbuds and really expensive earbuds seems like a jigsaw trap in and of itself. Well, if you want to escape that trap safely, check out the sponsor of today's video, Raycon. If you're anything like me, you find yourself in situations every single day where a good high quality pair of earbuds would certainly help the day go a lot smoother. But if you're even more like me, you don't think high quality should cost hundreds of dollars. For the past couple of weeks, I've been using Raycon's everyday earbuds every single day, whether I'm editing or I'm up late at night and don't want to disturb my wife, or even when I'm at the gym. And that last part was absolutely the clincher, because not only does this produce really high quality sound when I'm rocking out doing my sets, but there's noise isolation, and the most important part, these are the only earbuds I have ever used in the gym that do not slip out when I am mid-set. The everyday earbuds from Raycon are known for their high quality sound, but also for that perfect in-ear fit. As well as an eight hour battery life on the earbuds themselves with 32 hours of battery life on the charging case. And the sexiest part for me personally, all of that for less than half the price of other premium brands available. It's not much of a mystery how they've already racked up 78,000 five star reviews. And you're watching this at the perfect time because Raycon is turning six years old and to celebrate, they are doing an anniversary sale. And this past year, they expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon Home and Raycon PowerTech. So needless to say, there's a lot to celebrate. To thank everyone who's shown them support in the past six years, Raycon is offering 20% off of everything on their site with select products going as far as 40% off. So don't miss out on this and snag yourself a pair of Raycon's Everyday Earbuds. And not only are you gonna be picking up a great product at a great price, but of course, you're gonna be helping to support this channel. So celebrate Raycon turning six with their biggest sale of the year going on now by hurrying to buyraycon.com slash Cody Leach and use code BIRTHDAY to get 20 to 40% off site-wide. And thank you so much to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Now, back to the music. All right, guys, with that said, here we go. Starting off with the bathroom trap from the original Saw. 
And this is one that uh, I'm going to put in Forever Scarred. And there's a couple reasons for that. One, you know, this is when the, the franchise started off. So they didn't get quite as gnarly, quite as into the the body torture and the torture porn quite yet. Uh, it is one of the more intricate traps in the franchise, which makes it more memorable. Uh, being the first film almost also makes it more memorable. But there are so many different moving pieces to this, and there's so many different ways that I feel like it could have been much more easily survived than the two characters actually end up going through in the movie that just because the franchise continuously tried to top itself, I feel like it's safely placed there in the middle. Now, for those that are more celebratory that are a little bit more crazy about the first film they'll probably have it a little bit higher for me it belongs right there in the middle now we have the flammable jelly trap from the original where you have a guy who uh, i believe he always played sick or something like that i might be a little fuzzy on the details but nonetheless he gets covered in a flammable jelly and he has to go around this room that i even think the floor was covered in glass and there's numbers painted everywhere and he has to use a candle to try to get a combination to escape the room without lighting himself on fire and he ends up lighting himself on fire I'm going to put this in breaking the rules because there's so many different things in this trap that are just seemingly impossible to survive that I feel like it's absolute bullshit for anybody to think that somebody could have gotten out of that. I mean, you could have left him in there without the flammable jelly and without the glass, and he probably would have starved to death trying to figure out the combination. So memorable enough, I guess, for the start, but definitely not one of Jigsaw's more fair traps. Now we have the razor wire maze, and this one is going to go in forever scarred. You know, this is one where obviously the person didn't survive as well. I think he was somebody that liked to self-harm, which you can get into a little bit of a sticky situation there. That's a very real issue that people have psychologically and mentally and punishing them by making him cut himself further. Ah, you can get into some stickiness with that one. But nonetheless, he panicked. He freaked out. They did the James Wan little Jacob's Ladder type editing, and he ended up bleeding to death before he got out. Was there an easier way to get out if he had calmed down and chilled out? possibly i don't know it's memorable enough and it doesn't feel quite as unfair as flammable jelly so we'll stick it there in the middle the reverse bear trap the og from the original film amanda's trap this one's absolutely game over i don't think that it's going to be too controversial to say that the reverse bear trap might be the most popular trap in the saw franchise it's kind of the poster child of the saw franchise to a certain degree and while I've always been a little wishy-washy on the moral, the morality of that trap to where she literally just has to murder somebody and pull a key out of their stomach to survive, uh, if, if, if it was somebody that she knew, if it was somebody that, you know, wronged her or that she wronged, something like that to make it a little bit more fitting or thematic there, I think it would have been even stronger. But even with that little bit of a, a story writing fault, I guess you can call it, it's still, to me, the most memorable trap of the first film and one of the most memorable traps of the entire franchise. So one of my favorites. Now we have the drill chair in Saw. And I'm putting this one in you call that a test because there's just not enough details about this one. You don't really know much enough about the guy. He just happens to be there when the two detectives show up. Jigsaw kind of just uses him as a distraction. And of course, the detective just shoots the thing, let him out. We don't know the fate of that character beyond that. So it's a very small moment in the movie. It's not a memorable trap or a victim whatsoever. Now we have the shotgun hallway in the first saw. And this one is also going to go into breaking the rules for me. You know, the first movie right out of the gate did a really bad job at getting you to buy into Jigsaw's morality. And it's something that I was glad that finally in Saw X, they kind of had a tongue in cheek acknowledgement that it's kind of bullshit when the rest of the franchise played it dead serious. Like, no, 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 he's not a killer. He gives everybody a chance. The fuck he does. So the shotgun hallway, while it's a cool Kevin McAllister style trap, uh, he kills an innocent police officer who's just trying to do his job and rightfully stop the Jigsaw killer. You know, the same right after he slices the throat of Danny Glover, like that sequence right there in the first film has always been enough evidence for me to say Jigsaw's full of shit. So while it's cool, while it's a cool visual, while uh, that's something I even think in the video game, that was a recurring trap you had to avoid. So it's memorable enough. But yeah, breaking the rules on that one. Innocent cop just gets his head blown off. And the last one for the original Saw film we have is Zepp's Test. And this one for me is, again, breaking the rules. There's a lot of multi layers to this one. First of all, I don't feel like his excuse for why he's testing Zepp and using him as a pawn because he just 
you know, doesn't take charge of his life or something like that. I, I might be a little wishy-washy again with that term. I might use that more throughout this video on what the actual tape said, but more or less, it's just a guy who maybe doesn't stand out enough, maybe doesn't take charge enough. So I'm going to force you to murder a mother and a child who are innocent and then probably continue to kill your boss and this other dude who's in a bath. It's just so fucked up. <laughs> I mean, it's so clearly he just needed somebody to do all this so that he could lay in the fucking bathroom and play that whole game. But I've just never bought into Zep actually being tested. And to the degree that he's tested, it's just like, what is this supposed to teach him? So if if Lawrence Gordon fails his test, he has to shoot an innocent woman and a little girl. What is that supposed to teach him? I, I don't know. So uh, breaking the rules all around with that one. Actually, that one might be the most offensive of all of them. So um, I'm going to rearrange these at the end. That's where we'll do the favorites. Otherwise, I'm just going to drive myself nuts with it. Moving on to Saw 2. For a long time, that was my favorite of the franchise. And you have the Death Mask, or as I lovingly call it, the Venus Flytrap Mask. And this one, another game over to me. This one is... Uh, probably the the runner up to the most signature trap in the entire franchise, at least to me, you know, in my little bubble of the world. So it's a kick ass way to uh, to kick off Saw 2. You have a man who uh, has these two pieces of a mask that have spikes inside of them, and he has the key underneath his eyeball that we later find out that Lawrence Gordon placed there surgically, and he has to cut into his eye and get the key to get out of this trap, I think within 60 seconds. Jigsaw is always kind of an asshole with the time limits, okay? Yeah. However much reasonable time it would take for a human being to figure out they're fucked and then do something gnarly to themselves, he deducts like a full minute after that. Uh, so this one, one of the more exciting traps, one of the more gnarlier traps, and while if you were in your right mind, it would probably be easier just to cut open the stitch and just pull it back out from there instead of gouging out your eyeball, that is one that is tough. You know, it, as much as you might believe that you're about to die, it's going to be hard to to man up, <laughs> sack up and gouge your eyeball out. So, yeah, that one. Ooh, don't give me that one, baby. No, please. Electric staircase. This one is kind of like the upgrade to the shotgun hallway, and it's going right there and breaking the rules just with that one. So you have a bunch of cops that are cycling into this building, trying to uh, trying to ambush Jigsaw. And they get locked in this staircase cage to where their shins get crushed and it starts getting electrified. So he just murders a bunch of SWAT team for doing their job. Again, nothing wrong there. They didn't break any rules. There's no morality at play there. It's just Jigsaw being a murderer yet again. So don't care for that one. I don't like when this franchise does that. I really wish, if nothing else, during the movies that Jigsaw was prominently there, of which there's less than half in this franchise where he is, I wish they would have been really tight with that and then went off the rails with that with Hoffman because that character merits that. Now we have the nerve gas house, which is kind of the overall trap and the overall test for Donnie Wahlberg's character, Eric Matthews, Boy Meets World fans, where you at? And uh, while I'm going to get into all the other individual traps that are riddled throughout this house, the overall nerve gas house with all these different people stuck in this house through these different traps, there's these numbers and combinations and rainbow colors and and even the way that it works in to be the test of Eric Matthews. I think it's among one of the best traps in the entire franchise. This one is also going into game over to me as far as a really intricately created trap. That one is the best of the franchise. It's one of the reasons why Saw 2 was always my favorite. Now we have the Magnum Eye Hole, which is, you know, kind of a, a throwaway, let's just add to the body count type of trap. Uh, I, I'm just going to put Forever Scarred because Jigsaw does at least warn the person and, and saying, you know, don't just open that door. Don't just use this key. And the dumb fuck looks through the keyhole and then turns it. So he kind of asks for it, but at the same time, it's kind of a dick move. It's like, all right, dude, they just woke up in this fucking place. They're a little panicked, and you're just going to blow the people's head off for trying to open the only door with the only key you give them. Oh, Jigsaw, kind of an asshole. Now we have the furnace, which uh, I think Abby was the name of the character that got into that one. And, you know, this one, while I think it's one of the gnarlier deaths, I'm also going to stick this one in forever scarred and it would be higher for me if it wasn't so fucking obvious of actually, you know what? You know what? I'm changing my mind. I'm changing my mind. I'm actually going to put this in. You call that a test because my big issue with this is that it's so blatantly obvious how he could have survived this test. And the fact that they didn't like 
He didn't scope the thing out at all before climbing his entire fucking body into this oven is annoying enough. But when you see the little devil thing and you see the little nozzle, all he has to do is burn himself a little bit and turn the nozzle off and he would have survived. Otherwise, your entire body gets roasted anyway, and he can't do it. So he just dies like a dumbass. So, ugh, yeah, I, I was torn for a minute there, but that is one where it's just like, bitch, please, like, just pay attention a little bit before you climb into a fucking oven, please. <laughs> Didn't your parents teach you anything when you were a kid? Needle Pit Saw 2. This one, you know, as much as I say the reverse bear trap is kind of the fan favorite, this one is probably the, the runner up, if I'm being honest, as far as the amount of people that say how squeamish they are when they watch this scene. And ironically enough, they're both Amanda traps. So the needle pit saw two trap. I'm going to put it in game over. I was debating on kill me now. But uh, yeah, I'm somebody that can tolerate needles. You know, I'm somebody who's never really been bothered with shots or getting their blood drawn. But the thought of getting thrown into a pit of them and them just stabbing you everywhere and then having to physically search through them, that's pretty insane. And I'll tell you what, even though she was obviously a part of setting up this trap, so maybe she had a little bit of strategical advantage, the, the chances of <laughs> her actually finding what she needed in that pit, <laughs> luck was on her side. So yeah, the needle pit saw to, I think most often, as gnarly as some of these traps get, that's the one that I think most people call out as the one where they're just like, nope, nope, just shoot me in the head. I do not, do not want to deal with that one. And now the final trap from saw two, we have the razor box. And this one, I'm going to also throw when you call that a test, because like, I don't know with the nerve gas, if it was just making people stupid or not. I mean, obviously, I think this chick was like a drug addict or a prostitute or something, but yeah, the she seems so dumb to get killed in this trap to where she doesn't bother playing the tape. She doesn't bother looking around or trying to scope this thing out whatsoever. She just sees a syringe and it's like a two year old with fucking Skittles. They're like, ah, candy. And she just puts both of her hands into this razor box and then she's fucked. She's stuck there. And if you just even just fans when you look at that scene without even pausing it you see the lock you see the the way that she could have had one hand in it's such an easy trap to survive i don't even know if there was much of a chance of you actually hurting yourself if you just paused for a second and tried to figure things out before hastily sticking your hands in the death box so yeah for those that are squeamish about wrists being, being cut or anything like that uh, i guess that would be more of an effective trap for me that's the one where every time you watch it you're like you dumb broad come on now Ugh. and now we move on to saw three apparently a very love it or hate it for uh installment in this franchise i thought that that was kind of a, a generalized fan favorite but the comment section has taught me otherwise in my ranking so nonetheless we're kicking off saw three with the angel trap this is where the detective who is partners with Eric Matthews, I believe, she has all of these rods that are drilled into her rib cage, and she has to stick her hand in this vat of acid, this jar of acid to retrieve the key, to open the lock, to get those things out of her ribs before her entire chest cavity is torn open. But unfortunately for her, it was one of the traps that Amanda set up. So you're fucked. Uh, it's unwinnable. She intended on killing you. So, unfortunately, it is defaulted to breaking the rules, but I promise you, that one is probably going to be very far over to the left. If I wasn't following the tiers that I laid out here, and it was just, you know, whether or not they were winnable or not, they're just going to be ranked by favorite, this would be up towards the top, because I think it's a very gnarly trap. I think the visual of her chest getting torn out and her ribs just flying across the room is uh, possibly the most gnarly thing in Saw 3. So it is one of my favorites, but we'll get there. We'll wrap that up at the end of the video. The classroom trap. So you have the guy who has all these different hooks into him. In fact, this might have been the one that kicked off the movie. I might have fucked up that order, but nonetheless, who cares? He has all these different hooks in his body. He's in this classroom and he has to pull all of them out. Otherwise, the this pipe bomb is going to go off inside of the classroom. And yet again, this is one that Amanda set up. So it's unwinnable. So we're going to stick that in breaking the rules. It's a really gnarly trap. Uh, I don't even if the door was not welded shut and the guy wasn't fucked that way. She already screwed him by having the last hook be inside of his jaw. I mean, like that. How the fuck are you supposed to get that out, bitch? So, yeah, Amanda's ruthless. <laughs> Her trap sucked. 
do not get on her bad side. Now we have the shotgun collar. And, you know, I debated on putting this and one that we're going to get into in a minute here, Jeff's final test, as the same one, but thematically they're a little different. So I decided, fuck it, we'll just separate them. Uh, the shotgun collar is, to me, this one's also going to be breaking the rules because this woman did nothing wrong. You know, her and Jeff lost a child and their marriage kind of dissolved because of that. And that's really all she's at fault for is being a grieving mother. And yet she gets stuck into this situation to where if Amanda or Jeff fail their test, she's fucked. And so I, I don't think it's fair whatsoever that Jigsaw put her in the game. I mean, the shotgun collar trap itself is gnarly. The visual after it goes off is pretty gnarly, but she's top three at least of victims in this franchise that just did not deserve to be there. Now we have the freezer room. So in Jeff's tests, he is meant to be tested on whether or not he can forgive these people that are somewhat involved in the hit and run of his child, where this one, I believe was a witness that saw the accident, but in, rather than actually stop and help, she just kept driving. So she's in a freezer and there's sub-zero temperatures, and he has to go and retrieve a key, but he's going to burn himself, or he's going to rip off part of his flesh to get it to save her, and if he doesn't, she gets sprayed with water until she's a frozen block of frozen bitch. So, uh, freezer room, definitely forever scarred. You know, it's not one of the more memorable ones for me, but it's definitely one that even if he saved her, that's probably going to fuck you up pretty bad, and uh, that one would suck. That one would suck. It's one of the quicker deaths in the franchise. Maybe one of the more merciful ones, but still. Yeah. Daddy don't like the cold. Pig vat. Yeah, this one's nasty as fuck. And it's going up into kill me now. <laughs> so you got the judge, I believe. Uh, it's been a while since I watched Saw 3. You got the judge, if I'm not mistaken, who is put in the bottom of this gigantic vat. And Jeff has the choice to burn like toys, leftover belongings of his dead son to retrieve a key to save this guy or these pig carcasses that are rotting and have maggots and shit in them keep getting thrown into this grinder and all of the pig rotten juice just keeps getting thrown into this guy. So he's going to get drowned in nasty pig maggot juice. Holy fuck, that is disgusting. One of the most gross traps in this entire franchise. I mean, that's one where even if you survive, it's like, are you just going to off yourself as soon as you are out of this trap? I don't know. But uh, he does save the guy just to fuck him over later on in the movie. But it is, to me, one of the more memorable traps because not only is it just visually memorable, but... There's not too many traps in this franchise that don't go the pain route. They go the disgusting route. And so it stands out a bit. Now we have the Mac Daddy of them all. The Rack. The Rack from Saw 3 absolutely goes up to game over. Now, the only thing that's a little fucked up with the morality side of things on Saw 3 is that all of these people that are involved in this trap are completely reliant on life or death on whether Jeff forgives them or not. So I don't know if maybe Jigsaw gave them a trap before Saw 3, gave them a chance to actually live through their own will. If not, again, bit of a hypocrite. You know, he, he, you fucked up a little bit, so I'm going to just put you in this and give you a death sentence unless this guy says that you can live. And we revisit that in Saw 6. But nonetheless, the rack, you have the guy that actually killed Jeff's son, and he's in this device to where his hands are bolted, his feet are bolted, and his head is encased in this steel trap to where it's going to slowly click, 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 turn his limbs until they go too far and just snap. And my God, to this day, for as gnarly and as fucked up and as depraved as these traps have gotten 10 films in, this is still the one that I would least want to be in. This is the one that to me winces, makes me wince the most that I just hearing the sound of it just, Oh, it just makes me my stomach churn this as far as survivability or as far as like, which one would you rather die in? This one is the bottom of the list for me. And because of that, it is one of my absolute most memorable and most favorite traps in this franchise. So absolutely goes up there to game over and that is a strong contender for number one of the entire franchise if I was ranking them just by favoritism. 
Now we move on to the final two tests of Saw 3, which you know are, are traps in and of themselves, kind of, because there's death involved and there's intricate moving pieces. These are the only two that I was kind of torn on whether I should include them or not, but I decided to. So you have Amanda's test, which I'm going to stick in breaking the rules because they added in the detail later on about Hoffman forcing her into this when she might have gotten past it, she might have won the test, but she was put in a stalemate. So essentially the entire movie, the twist reveal, the, the more major of the twist reveals is that Jigsaw is actually testing her because he knows that she's been killing people and having unwinnable traps. And so this entire scenario with the shotgun collar and the doctor and Jeff's wife and all that is a test for her to see if she can let somebody live. But instead she shoots her. And as soon as she shoots her, Jeff comes in and out of vengeance shoots her. So she dies. And that's how we lose Amanda. And, you know, it would have been higher. It would have probably at least been to forever scarred for me because I really like the character. But when they add in that extra detail and, and saw five or whatever it was that Hoffman more or less blackmailed her into forcing her to lose her own test, I think it loses a lot of its power. So unfortunately, that's where it's got to go. Jeff's final test, the forgiveness test. Uh, this one's going to be uh, I'm going to say you're going to you call that a test. It's, it's it's not a really good way to wrap up that movie to me. I mean, Jeff already is a pretty dull character. I mean, I didn't realize this was like an ongoing joke in the horror community when I said this in my villain ranking, uh, but slow motherfucking Jeff, <laughs> I think is the phrase that has been coined and used throughout horror YouTube. This fucking dude is so dull and slow, even though I like thematically what his test is all about. And you get to the end and he learns nothing. After that big emotional loss at the rack where he's trying to save the guy at the very end, he's too late and he's just fucking horrified at what he just allowed to happen. Then five minutes later, he learns nothing. You know, Jigsaw says, hey, let me live or you're going to regret it. And he just cuts his throat, killing the best character in this franchise. First of all, thanks, Jeff. But also it just kind of makes his entire journey throughout the movie kind of a moot point. And so the whole trap now is that his wife, it's her head blown off in front of him. He's locked into this room yet again for another test where his daughter is now the person that he has to save, which they wrap up in a really unsatisfying way, in my opinion, in Saw 5 by just uh, or Saw 4 by just having it be a twist that, oh, it's happening at the same time. And who cares? So, yeah, that that's one of the more boring wrap ups for me. Not a very interesting conclusion, in my opinion. Now we're on to Saw 4, and now we have the mausoleum trap. And, eh, you know, mm, I'll stick this one in Forever Scar just because the visual of it is really cool with the see no evil, hear no evil kind of thing um, to where, uh, or yeah, see no evil, speak no evil, excuse me. You have one character whose lips are sewn shut. You have one character whose eyes are sewn shut. They're both chained to this machine that's continuously pulling the slack, and they have to get the key from each other to unlock their respective collars. But the guy who can't see is freaking the fuck out and the guy who can't speak can't calm him down. So he ends up having to kill him to get the, the key. And then he rips open his mouth at the end of it. And then that guy ends up being a major pawn in the, the back half of saw four, you know, to a certain degree, I kind of feel like it's a bit bullshit. Like it teeters on breaking the rules because I mean, when you have a situation like that, inevitably the guy who can't see is kind of fucked. So like you must have really preferred the guy that you sewed his lips shut. But nonetheless, it is survivable. Uh, it is something where if they had calmed down, they might have been able to survive both together. The, the other part of it I don't understand is that if you have the guy Art, I believe was his name, the guy who survives this trap. OK, he won his test. So why does he get back into another test in Saw 4? Maybe they explain that somehow, but Saw 4 is the least memorable of all these movies to me, so I'm going to forget shit. Nonetheless, Forever Scarred, that's where it's going. Now with Saw 4, we have the scalping seat. This is where the woman's hair is tied into the machine, and it's slowly tightening and pulling her scalp back. And the test for the main character, Rig, is you're not supposed to save her. Don't save her. That, that's your whole thing. Don't save her. Just let her, let her go through her thing. And this one is, again, Forever Scarred. You know, as painful as it looks, uh, I, I just I don't really like Saw 4's whole 
game that Rig is in to where he's a good cop. At worst, he might, you know, bend the rules a little bit with breaching doors and stuff, but he's not really doing anything wrong enough to merit him being tested, let alone tested to this degree to where it inevitably leads to his death. So this is another one of those traps where it's like, okay, the lesson here to be learned is don't save the dying woman. The fuck? Okay. And so he saves her. He doesn't listen and she tries to kill him. Whatever. Uh, now we have the bedroom trap. This is one of the more standout ones in Saw 4. This one's going up to kill me now for many different reasons. First of all, it's a gnarly ass trap. Second of all, it is very winnable. And third of all, it's a little bit satisfying to see a person with the crimes of the victim here. I don't want to say it out loud and get demonetized, but if you've seen the film, yeah, that's, that's a person that you can enjoy seeing go through that trap, whether they win or lose. So you got this guy who gets forced into these straps. His arms and his legs are bound on this bed, and he has these two little Jeopardy clickers. And if he clicks it, a knife comes down and stabs him in the eye. And so he clicks one for some stupid ass reason. Why wouldn't you just click both and get it over with? Clicks one, loses his eye, hesitates to click the other one. Timer goes out. All of his limbs get ripped off. So it's gnarly as hell. It's definitely one that would suck. It's along the lines of Death Mask, the, the Venus fly trap, where it's just like, my eyes? Really? I like movies, man. You got to take fucking my eyes. But very satisfying. So now we move on to the spike trap from Saw 4, where you have the woman and her abusive husband and there's these rods that are put through them, and it's in non-lethal places for her, but very lethal places for him. So if she pulls them out to save and free herself, she's going to doom her abusive husband to death. And, you know, this one, while not being one of the more memorable traps as far as, like, gore or how gnarly it is, I really like thematically what they do with this trap as far as a woman freeing herself from her abuser. So I'm going to stick this one up and kill me now. You know, it's going to be on the lower rung of that category for sure. Uh, and I'm I'm not even really saying that it's better as far as uh, the overall package as some of the ones in Forever Scarred. But it's one of the traps that I feel like comes together the most as far as the moral lesson that Jigsaw is trying to teach. So that one. I actually like I wish we got more traps that were more about the theme there than just the gore, but I'm probably on a small, small island with that one. Now we have the explosive puppet where Billy explodes in the face of Strom's partner and it looks like she's dead, but she's actually fine in the next movie. So you, know, you call that a test. It's not even lethal. It's not even deadly. And you're attacking people that are just cops trying to do their job. So if it's not breaking the rules, it's. You call that a test, and I think it's pretty lame. Not much else to say about that one. Knife chair. This is, I believe, before Jigsaw fucked up the cannon. This was the first trap that John ever did. It was the guy that uh, caused the miscarriage of his wife, and so he puts him in this chair with these blades and says, you have to push your face through these blades, but then the chair fucking breaks, and the guy gets out, and he dives after Jigsaw. Jigsaw sidesteps and jukes his ass, and he lands into a bunch of razor wire. Not really memorable at all. I mean, and the, the fact that the engineering of it was so shitty, you call that a test? I mean, Jigsaw is like a brilliant engineer. And yet this trap is so fucking half-assed. It's for the guy that you would think of everybody here, he would want to kill the most and he would want to put through the most pain. That's such a lame trap. So not a fan. Now we have the spine cutters in Saw 4, and this is another one to where, you know, I don't know if I should put it in breaking the rules or you call that a test, because I genuinely don't remember the justification that we're given, if any, of why this guy has to go through a second test. But you have Art here who has to be kind of the Zep of Saw 4, where he is the one running the trap with Detective um, Matthews and Hoffman and waiting on Rig to arrive, and then he gets killed because Rig's a fucking person that don't wait for no answers. He's a shoot first, ask questions later. Uh, the spine cutters, you know, we don't even really get to see the aftermath of it. So I'm putting that and you call that a test. It's not a very memorable or an interesting one. Um, yeah, nothing else to say about that one either. Not a fan. The ice black trap. Now, as much as I don't like at all Riggs's actual test, for multiple reasons. Like I said, I don't think that he deserves to be tested. Number two, it happens all across different buildings in town. So he's mobile the entire fucking movie going to all these different places. 
and yet he never figures out a way to get help. He never figures out a way to get a phone call or a message to one of Strom or somebody to come help him. He just goes around town by himself being fucking solo Punisher, I guess. I don't know. And then you get to this at the end where the ultimate culmination of his test is don't breach the door. Don't save them. And you have Detective Hoffman that's sitting there that could audibly yell something to him like, don't open the fucking door. We're going to die. It's a part of your test. Let the, let the timer run out. Trust me. Don't do it. He doesn't say any of that. He's just like rah, 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 with the gun. So that holds it down a little bit. The actual visual of the trap I like a lot. Besides the fact that, you know, I, I do like uh, Eric Matthews character. So it sucks to lose him, even though he lost his test. Uh, but um, the whole setup initially with the the heater and melting the ice and Hoffman being suspended over the electricity and then it reveals that the ice blocks are going to crush his head. It's one of the cooler reveals of traps. So I'll stick it right there in the middle. You know, it's it's it. there's shit with it that I don't like enough to get it to kill me now, but it is one of the ones that I do like. Now we have the water cube that kicks off Saw 5 where Strom is, you know, knocked out and then he wakes up in this cube that's filled with water and he only survives because he performs a tracheotomy with a pen. You know where it's going, breaking the rules. It's a cool visual, you know, it's a cool thing for the poster, but um, this is where we started to get into that Hoffman heavy era where the morality side of things just really just out the fucking window. Pendulum Trap, Saw 5. This is another one. Breaking the rules. This is the one where Hoffman, his first kill, there was the guy that killed his sister, and he made it look like a jigsaw trap to kind of frame Jigsaw, but then Jigsaw realized that it was him, and it leads to eventually him more or less telling him, either you're going to be my apprentice or I'm going to fuck you up. Um, what I like about this trap and why it's probably going to be shifted a little bit more to the left here at the end of the video is that I like the Edgar Allan Poe flavor that we have here with the pit and the pendulum. You know, he, he has this very gnarly version of that to where he has to stick his hands in these things and these pistons are going to crush his hands. And if he crushes his hands all the way, he'll live. But because it's Hoffman, he don't live. He just goes through a lot of pain there and then the thing drops and rips his entire midsection in half. So it's a gnarly trap. Now we have the shotgun chair and Saw 5. I debated on not even having this as a trap because it's kind of rigged, but it kind of counts, but it's pretty fucking lame. I'm not a fan of Saw 5, so there's a lot of things about Saw 5. It's not going to be very high for me, but the shotgun chair, that is one where uh, where Jigsaw is having the conversation with him about either you're going to be my apprentice or I'm going to fuck you up, but it's like an empty shotgun. So he he tests him, but it's not a lethal test. Now we're on to the traps of, I think there was five people where the ultimate test uh, was that they're supposed to work together, but of course they don't. They turn on each other immediately. And you have the necktie trap to where they're all chained up uh, against this wall and they're told you have to go forward and retrieve this key, but if one of you goes forward, the rest of you are going to get pulled back. So rather than one at a time, them working together, my turn, my turn, they just fight each other and one of them doesn't get their key in time and gets yanked back and gets their head decapitated. It's an interesting enough trap. I'm going to put it in forever scarred. I don't feel like the twist that they are supposed to work together was all that surprising. It's actually why I, I kind of forgot to mention it when I was ranking the twists and I got to Saw 5. But um, this is one of the more egregious movies, if not the most, at completely separating the story of the people in the trap to the main plot. And I always think of Saw 5 as the main plot of Strom versus Hoffman. I never think of these people, even though the actors portraying a lot of these characters I like. Now we have the ceiling jars trap to where there are these big pipe openings with these um, bars and they're told to break the ceiling jars to get these keys. And there's only enough for three of the four, uh, three tunnels and there's four people, but they're fucking massive tunnels. <laughs> so anybody with a brain is like, dude, we could probably all fucking fit into one. Really? Like, I mean, come on, we'll get a little close. We'll, we'll, we'll hug each other. But they don't, they just continue to fight each other and then inevitably one dude gets blown up. So uh, I'm going to stick this one again right next to the other one in Forever Scarred. It's not super memorable to me. Uh, and again, at that point, by the time you saw the size of those tunnels, it's like, I feel like they're being tested on whether or not they can work with each other, but we'll find out in the final act. 
Now we have the electric bathtub, and this is one, yet again, to where if all of them were alive, they would just kind of share the current and get a little bit of shock, but because there's only three of them left, uh, Julie Ben's character ends up killing Megan Good's character, stabbing it in her, in her neck. They throw her into the bathtub and inject her with all five of them to close the circuit and sacrifice her to get through the trap. That one, uh, that one's the least interesting of all those traps to me. It, it's not nearly as egregious as some of these with you call that a test, but that one to me is the most boring to where whether they're killing one person and throwing her in a bathtub or all five of them are sitting there getting a little shock. It's not very interesting. Now we have the final test, which is the 10 pints of blood. And uh, this one, I'm actually going to stick. And we're going to stick in forever scarred. It's not quite enough for, for kill me now, but this is one of the, the better ones, probably the best one of saw five, in my opinion, as far as the, the separate storyline to where they get the reveal. Hey, there's five holes here. What the fuck? <laughs> this Willy Wonka, you're supposed to know that one of us leaves every time we get a new test. And it turns out, hey, if you were all alive, you would have only had to donate two pints of blood. And that's that ain't shit. But since there's only two of you, one or both of you is going to get fucked up. And so you have Julie Benz and the other dude that have to push their hand in the machine while this rotary saw cuts into their hand. And fucking homeboy cuts that shit all the way down to here and gets like a super <laughs> Friday the 13th final chapter thing going on. And that shit was gnarly. Julie Benz plays the fucking helpless female like oh oh wait oh you're already seven inches in oh i'm trying oh okay that's 10 pints all right good <laughs> we're good guys thanks buddy oh yeah that shit's funny it's all five but yeah it's decent enough forever scarred i've never done one of these long like one hour long just one take type videos so i might start to seem a little delirious here and there but we'll, we'll get there we're only halfway we're only halfway now we're at saw six and no, actually, actually, that was mislabeled. Sorry, I did not create this tier list. Luckily enough, somebody else went through all this work and I had to rearrange them. But this one's mislabeled as Saw 4 when it's Saw 5. Gla Glass Coffin. So this is the ending of Saw 5. And this one, I've never liked this. This one's going into you call that a test. The reason I don't like this because it only works the way that this movie needs it to work for the ending that they want, where Hoffman ends up inside the case and Strom gets crushed. If all these little things line up, I'm not going to go all into it again. Watch my twists uh, ranked video. And I go into all of my issues with this, but there's so many things that could have went wrong here. And it's one of the most convenient endings and traps of the entire franchise. And, you know, inevitably too, it kind of belongs in breaking the rules if, if I did like it, because there's no winning that thing. It's, it's, it's completely rigged for Strom to get fucked over. Moving on to Saw 6, we open up with Pound of Flesh, where you have a, a heavier set guy and a black woman, and they're in this trap, and they have to give more flesh to this little teetering scale. And whoever can donate the most flesh will not have these little drills put into their temple. And you get all the way to the end of it. I mean, they're cutting off skin. They're cutting off fat. They're cutting off all this stuff, trying to get in there. And the woman just says, fuck this shit, cuts her whole arm off and throws her arm in there to win. And the guy loses. That's a pretty gnarly one. That goes up to kill me now. I mean, you've got to think about like just how hard it would be to cut off one piece of your flesh and throw it in there. But to have to keep doing it and race somebody else for who's got the most will to live. That's a fucked up trap. Now we have the oxy oxygen crusher, and this is the first test that this insurance adjuster goes through to where he wakes up. He's got this little mask on. He's got the janitor, I believe, from his company. He's got a mask on, and he, I believe, had emphysema or he was a smoker. And so his lung capacity was much worse than the, ma uh, the, the main character in these traps. And the trap says if you breathe, it's going to have these pistons push these little rocks, these these little plates into your side and it's going to crush your midsection and inevitably the guy who doesn't have a smoker's lung wins but pretty fucked up trap but not very memorable so that one's going to go in forever scarred like you know that's one that you would feel guilty about winning because i mean you just have a, a innocent janitor i mean the janitor has to be fucking tested the janitor jigsaw what did the janitor do he just cleans the fucking toilets of all these assholes that did all this stuff <sighs> nonetheless, you know, that's almost breaking the rules level for me, but you have a lot of guilt 
in this trap that you are the survivor. That's a survivor's guilt trap. Now you have the gallows. And thematically, I like this one, even though it's not very interesting, uh, because you essentially have this guy who his entire rule has been whoever is going to live longer. You know, the younger guy who's got less health issues, we'll cover them because we're probably not going to have to pay out very much. And he has this situation where he has to pull these two uh, ropes and these two handles and whichever one he lets go of, that person's going to die and they're being they're going to be hung with barbed wire. On one hand, you have a young guy with perfect health, but he has no life. He has no loved ones. He's a nothing, a nobody. And then you have a woman who has a loving family, a lot of things to live for, but she also has like diabetes and a bunch of other shit. And so it teases you with which one he's going to save. And he inevitably saves the one that he would normally go against as a professional. So he lets the young man die and saves the older woman with a lot more to live. So I like that one. It's not nearly as interesting as something like the spike trap to me. Uh, so it's not quite kill me now as far as the, the me liking the thematics of it and, and uh, liking what it stands for. But, you know, I, I like it enough. Now we have the steam maze. And this is another one that's complicated for me on where to put it. Because in, in one way, it's memorable and it's really shitty <laughs> as far as the pain you would have to endure to go through this but the extra detail at the end of it is what i don't like because yet again it kind of breaks the whole logic of all of this so you have this maze to where this woman who works with this insurance investigator has to go through this maze and there's these areas where steam is shooting through and he has the option to reroute the steam and have it blow onto him and he endures that so she can get through without pain and he does that for the most part. He lets her get hit a couple of times. But nonetheless, she gets through. And then she has like 20 seconds left. And there's these pictures up that show that the key to unlock the, the trap that she is in is inside of his midsection. And so with no time whatsoever to explain things, she grabs this rotary saw and just starts swinging it at him, trying to get this key frantically. And of course, she doesn't have enough time. He dodges it just enough. And the, the spike goes through her fucking chin all the way up to her brain and i don't like that extra detail at the end of it because like they already went through one trap now you're gonna have a whole second piece of it and what if she won what if she killed him the fucking movie just stops there and everybody else that he's supposed to be tested with they're just they just get to hang out and starve to death i mean it's just oh it's a frustrating one because there's part of me that wants to put it a little bit higher but I really, really don't like that logic issue at the end of it. So it's going to be more forgiving than a lot of these, but I'm putting it in breaking the rules because to me, this trap is unwinnable. I mean, it, with the amount of time that they give her to get through this maze and he takes a lot of blunt of the, the, the damage there with that steam and she makes it out. There's just not enough time for them to have a calm conversation about, Hey, that scar, that, that, that stitch thing, we just need to open that up and get this key. And then we're both good. And it, 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 there's so many issues with that that it has to go there for me. It just doesn't make any sense. Now we have the shotgun carousel. And this one is another complicated one because, again, you have all five of these people that are strapped, five or six that are strapped to this, that feels like it's an it's kind of a betrayal of the whole jigsaw thing of, like, like if we're going to compare this to Saw 3 where they can survive if the main character does what he needs to do to help them survive. Well, here he's handcuffed just like with the previous trap that, that I'm a little more forgiving on. Cause I like the theme of it with the gallows where one person inevitably has to die. That doesn't deserve it. Now you have the shotgun carousel to where you can only save two and three people are fucked no matter what. So I don't know. The, the only thing that's saving this one is I think it's one of the more memorable visuals of the entire franchise. So it's going to make it up into forever scarred right next to the gallows. You know, they both have the same issue. Thematically, I like what the gallows stands for a little bit more. Visually, I like what the shotgun carousel does a little bit more, but they're pretty even for me. Now we have the culmination of Saw 6 in the acid room. And this one is breaking the rules. Because this guy just endured this entire test. He makes it through every single one of these rooms. He does everything that he can. And now he's inevitably fucked because the twists reveal that these people, this this 
kid and this woman in this cage is actually not his family. It's the family of somebody that he denied coverage to who eventually died of their illness. And so inevitably one of them is going to be vengeful. So the kid pulls the fucking thing down. These syringe things come down and hit the main character in the back and inject a bunch of acid into him and melt him from the midsection down. I mean, common sense at that point with a guy already been through five or however many fucking traps that he steps on this pressure plate. He should have at least like looked up and been like, Oh, syringes. Maybe I should move my ass that way. Uh, but, uh, nonetheless, uh, it's not fair to that character. Like this is still technically a jigsaw trap. This is not a Hoffman trap because jigsaw is the one that has the, the video and everything. And he's the one that wanted to punish him because he denied jigsaw coverage. And yet it's one of the most unfair traps that Jigsaw has ever done to where it's like, you just wanted to kill that fucking guy, man. Just, just be honest. Just, just whisper it in my ear. I ain't going to tell nobody. Just tell me. Now we have the bear trap 2.0. This is actually the last trap in Saw 6. Uh, so you have Jill through a set of scattered reveals that she has been given the last will of Jigsaw. And part of that is that she is supposed to take down Hoffman because Jigsaw knows that his ass is crazy and he's inevitably going to go off the rails. And this one, I'm going to put it up and kill me now. It's not quite game over status like the OG because it's just, you know, the OG is the OG for a reason. But what I like about this one is how gnarly his escape is, as much as I don't like the character of Hoffman. So this is a little bit uh, more pristine looking of a trap. You know, it's a little sexier looking, looks a little bit more like something you could probably sell on Amazon. I like the more archaic rusted look of the original, uh, but, you know, nonetheless, there's a lot of reasons why I like the original a little bit better. But you have Hoffman that is able to break his hand, his thumb, get out of this chair, which the survival instinct on this guy is gnarly. Then he is able to shove the trap into the bars of this door where it can't open all the way. And then he rips the side of his mouth open like a Glasgow smile. And the visual of him like ah, that that movie ends on as much as I don't like his character. And as much as I roll my eyes at how much shit that slithery fucking snake escapes in those four movies. I like that as a visual. It's pretty intense. So that one pretty awesome going up and kill me now. Uh, Cause I don't think I would have the strength to do that. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I, I wouldn't want my jaw ripped open, but to just, just rip through the whole side of my face. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Now we're on to saw 3d and this one's uh, a lot of ups and downs with the traps. And this is one actually think has most, uh, the most traps of the entire franchise for one movie. So we have the public execution that kicks this movie off to where you have a love triangle. You have two guys in their 20s. You have the chick hung up there and there's three saw blades and one of them has to die. And it's in this big public display box where everybody can sit and watch how the fuck he got in there and got that thing set up. I have no idea. Don't ask questions in the saw franchise. But as much as... <laughs> I've seen some very strange feminist arguments about why this trap is problematic. Uh, there's plenty of other women that die in this franchise. I don't know why that is the one that gets that attention. But nonetheless, I actually like the whole love triangle angle here to where they're, the boys are just going at each other like, fuck you, man. It's my girl, man. Fuck you, bro. And then as soon as one starts to win, she's like, I love you, Brad. Yes, save us. And then as soon as he starts to lose, she's like, Okay, fuck Brad. I love you, Jeff. Come on, save us. And I like the fact that these guys had enough self-respect to be like, you know what? Fuck her. And they just let her go. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. I don't not like I'm enjoying the fact that she dies, but it's just, it's a funny situation that more often than not in real life, that one of the guys ends up being the casualty of that love triangle. And this time, the cheating bitch got it, so... <laughs> that one, you know, I, it, it's going in forever scarred. It's not cool enough to be in Kill Me Now, but I, I, I like that one. I, I have a little bit of fun with that one. Now we have the suspended cage. This one sucks. Let's just call it what it is. You call that a test? First of all, if he fell and hit the spikes and died, just like with the one that I was just ranting about in, was it Saw 6? So what happens now? He does. He just doesn't get the rest of his traps. Everybody else that's tied into this game, they just fucking die because he didn't make it past room one. That's one problem. Second problem is it's not interesting. The floor comes out of the cage and he has to Tarzan swing and jump over it. 
that's fucking lazy. Come on now. Now we have the pain train from Saw 3D. This one is also going into, you call that a test, because it's a fucking dream sequence. And this was the sequence that they used to promote this movie, to promote the 3D. Uh, I saw this clip more than I saw the trailer of Saw 3D when this thing was getting ready to come out. And so it feels like they only threw this in here to have a 3D effect of the train and to also have something to mislead audiences to where they're throwing this clip out and everybody's like, that's kind of a spoiler. So you just told us that they killed Jill and it's just a dream sequence. It's fucking dumb. We all hate dream sequences for the most part. There's one that we're going to talk about later on that's done significantly better that I love. This is not one of them. This is dumb. This is just there to have a 3D gimmick and 3D gimmicks suck. Lawnmower trap in Saw 3D. Eh... Yeah, this one's also going to go and you call that a test, because not only is it told to us in a very brief little retelling when they're having the whole survivors anonymous thing, but it doesn't make any sense as a trap. It doesn't make any sense. You have this woman and her abusive husband or boyfriend or whatever. They're hanging on this thing suspended over a bunch of upside down lawnmowers, and she smacks him and he falls to his death and she's sitting there. First of all, how the fuck did they wake up on this trap without holding themselves up? We don't get to see how they got there, and so that's a big question mark. Second question is, how the fuck does she get down after she's won? It's not very interesting of a trap, and then when it causes that many logic issues, and that's what you're talking about instead of the gore, you fucked up. Now we have the horsepower trap with Chester Bennington, rest in peace. Uh, you have a whole bunch of neo-Nazis where he is super glued to this car. He is supposed to rip the skin off of his back and pull this lever. Otherwise, the car is going to fall and crush his girlfriend's face. And when the car hits the pavement and drives off, it's going to rip the limbs and the jaw out of his friend. It's going to hit his other friend on the way out of this garage. And then it's going to crash and it's going to send him to his death. Spoiler alert. Old Chester doesn't make it. So everybody gets fucked up. This is another trap that's meant for the carnage candy for the 3D effect, but, but it's a pretty fucking awesome trap. I think it might be the best one of that movie. So I'm putting it up and kill me now. I think it's pretty awesome. You know, it is survivable if he had just pulled a little harder and he gives it a hell of a, a hell of a show, a hell of a shot trying to get it. Uh, if you just get a little, little bit more oomph in there, he could have survived, but it, it's a pretty gnarly trap to see all of the carnage of his mistake. So I like that one. Now we have the impalement wheel in saw 3d. And this is the one to where essentially it's proof that Sean Patrick Flannery never does squats. <laughs> so you have this woman who's like his publicist or something to where she is put up against the wall. And there's these three things you know, two at her eye and one at her face. That's going to impale her in the face unless he can lift this bar up that's going to stab him and he can endure the pain long enough to save her. Well, he ain't got, you know, he skips leg day at the gym, I guess. He's just a shoulders and arms guy and he lifts it up. He ain't man enough to stand there long enough. So he lets go and she dies. I mean, I'm putting that and you call that a test because first of all, that should have been very easy as much as it's going to suck to get stabbed. That's got to be very easy at that point. It's only your second fucking trap, dude. To, to help her and you pushed out, you know, shame, shame. Now we have the hangman's noose. And this one is also one that's pretty fucking lame. It's going to go right there and you call that a test. Now you have his friend, I believe, who's on the other side of this room that's up high. There's no floor. There's just a couple of rafters. And then there's these boards that are scattered throughout and he can't see and he's tethered to something. And on Sean Patrick Flannery's side, there's a key and he has to get the key to his friend to unlock this little device on his face to help him live. And so he immediately thinks the best way to do this is for me to call out to this guy who can't fucking see and try to audibly give him directions to navigate on these tiny ass boards suspended above this open pit. And one of the boards even ends up being like a false board that breaks and he catches himself on the other one. When very clearly... It seems so much more easy for Sean Patrick Flannery just to get the key and take his ass across the other side to help his friend or even meet in the middle or something. And he just he just sits there. and He's like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm going to let this guy, you know, do the whole game here. And I'm just going to chill on this side. And, you know, we'll see what happens. Well, what happens is the fucking dude dies. 
So it's not the most interesting trap. There's no gore. There's nothing like visually to stand out. And it feels like it's such an easy trap to figure out. And he does the opposite that it just makes his character seem so stupid. Two traps in a row now where it's like, dude, you suck. You fucking suck. Now we have the wisdom teeth. And this is another one that I think is pretty lame. You know, for uh, Saw 3D is quantity, not quality. We can say that definitively now. You have this trap to where engraved or written on his wisdom teeth, he has two numbers. And so he has to have these, he has to have these little um, tongs or whatever to pull out his wisdom teeth to get these numbers to unlock this door and get out of the room. First of all, it's a very simple trap. Second of all, I don't think anybody could pull their own teeth out with that. I mean, you have to have a lot of strength to rip teeth out that aren't ready to be pulled out. I mean, think about how much strength it takes to pull out a loose tooth sometime. You ever had like a six-year-old fighting you and you're sitting there like, just give it to me. You're going to get a dollar. So then you had the whole logic issue of how the fuck did they engrave that on his teeth underneath his gums? I don't know. It's dumb. It's a lame one. Nothing else to say about that one. Now you have the silent circle. And holy shit, this is another one that goes up to kill me now because... (sighs) First of all, it's one of the most memorable traps, and uh, it's one of the few in this movie that I think actually stand out among the rest of the franchise, but Jesus Christ, can you think how horrible it must be to be the person who is at the center of this trap? She's got this string going down into her mouth that is attached to a fish hook and a key, and she's in this trap to where these pistons with the spikes in four different places, and if she makes any audible noise hence screaming at the agonizing pain, they get closer to her neck. And Sean Patrick Flannery's character has to pull this string and get this key out of her esophagus while simultaneously a fish hook is just dragging all the way up through her stomach and her esophagus and just tearing at her flesh on the inside, causing her to scream in agony. Oh, and it's drawn out too because he'll pull a little bit. She screams and he stops, covers her mouth. And then he pulls another couple inches and then covers his mouth. He's like, shut up, bitch. You're going to die. Now be quiet while I do this again. Keeps pulling up and the fucking dude gets it just too late. And it comes up and there's a big piece of flesh attached to the hook that's from her insides. And it's just like, oh, my God. So simple, but so stomach churning. So that is one that definitely is, is very memorable from that movie to me. Now we have two stupid ones. Uh, We have the cyanide box, which goes to breaking the rules to where it's just there to blow up and kill a bunch of cops that are coming after Hoffman. You know, Hoffman doesn't have any morality, so he kills a lot of people. And this trap is just dumb. It's just an extra room that they're basically forced to go into. The door locks and these little cyanide capsules come down and fill the room with poison gas. And very similarly, you have the sentry gun trap, which also is breaking the rules to where the detective characters are... Closing in on Hoffman, they get into this room and apparently somebody watched Breaking Bad and they have this little sentry gun come up and shoot everybody. They're not interesting. They kill characters that we don't know, don't care about, and they're they're just there to to take some cannon fodder out on innocent cops. So not really worth talking about. Now we have the brazen bull and there are some passionate thoughts on this trap, myself included. And. This is so difficult to place. This is the most difficult one to place in this entire list because there are so many thoughts that I have with this one. First of all, I think it's bullshit that his wife gets put into this trap who is completely innocent and she endures one of, if not the worst deaths, most painful deaths in this entire franchise. Innocent person, that's stomach churning. So what I like about it is that they make him go through the trap that he lied about. He kept telling everybody in his claim to fame that he had to put these hooks into his pectoral muscles and pull himself up on these chains. And so they make him do that again. That's awesome because it just (laughs) makes him like, okay, you want to have the fame for it? Now time to prove yourself, motherfucker. So that's cool. However, it seems very clear at that point. There's nobody watching. Um, Can you not just put the fucking hooks in your pants? Can you not put them in your belt loops? Can you not do something else with them to pull yourself all the way up? So there's one logic issue I've always had with it to where like, okay, you couldn't have tried something else that, that, mm, I don't know, dude. 
and the fact that it's an unwinnable test if he does what he's actually told to do and doesn't think outside the box like I would have. His, the pectoral muscles aren't made to hold that much weight, and they know that. So he gets to the top and inevitably fails, which leads to his wife being roasted alive. Ah, damn, I don't know. But it's also really fucking gnarly and memorable. Um, You know, I'm going to stick it in breaking the rules. I'm going to stick it in breaking the rules because I don't like the fact that an innocent person dies and it's basically rigged to where it's unwinnable unless you get really creative and find a loophole like I would try to do. Now we have the Bear Trap 3.0. And I do not like this whatsoever. It's going and you call that a test. I don't like this because for seven movies, we were waiting to see somebody lose the reverse Bear Trap test. And Hoffman should have been the one to get that. But for whatever reason, they decide that Jill, while villainous to a certain extent, the most innocent person on Jigsaw's payroll, just an ex-wife that was vengeful slightly because she loved her husband and because she lost her child to a miscarriage. She's the one that we have to see get her face torn open. That's not satisfying to me. That really left a bad taste in my mouth. And yet again, Hoffman gets away. Hoffman gets the better of her. And he gets away for a few minutes. And she has to be the one to finally endure the reverse bear trap. I've always hated that. I've always hated that. There is such a more satisfying way to do that. And the why they decided to do that. Where's the feminists on that one? <laughs> I don't know. That one. At, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And now we are on to Jigsaw, and the opening trap is the bucket room, where you have all, what is it, five people that are attached to a chain that is getting pulled towards a bunch of buzz saws, and they have this bucket on their face, and one of them is dead-ass asleep for some reason. Picked a bad fucking time to nap, buddy. Uh, this one, I'm putting in, you call that a test, purely because it's such an easy test to survive. Now, this makes sense as an opening trap, because obviously... <laughs> they want people to continue on and endure more traps. Uh, but w very easily, they figure out through communication what they have to do. You just have to lose, like, get sliced for a mid-second and you get released. So not really that interesting of a trap, honestly. And the fact that, I mean, it's eventually revealed that it's Logan and it doesn't really matter anyway. But the fact that one person was asleep the whole time seems very weird like, that's the point where it would have made more sense in the twist reveal for it to say that Jigsaw took pity on him because he just took a fucking nap and he didn't wake up from the drugs in time to win the test. And so he's like, oh, you fucked it up, man. Come on. Give me this damn bucket. You want to be an apprentice? But no, they're like, yeah, he took sympathy on him. He said, you don't deserve to be tested. It was just a little mistake. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that one's it, it, it's OK. It's an OK start. Now we have the chain hangers. From Jigsaw. And this is another one where I'm going to stick it in. You call that a test because it's so easy to win. You have these three syringes that come down. One of them is saline solution. One of them is an antidote to a poison that is running through the, um, the pickpocket. And one of them is acid. And it's only because she is just hysterical and stupid that they don't win this trap and the jackass is forced to just inject all three needles into her to save everybody else. So one, she looks at the needles and it says like $3 and two cents or whatever on it. And she knows immediately like, Oh, that's how much I stole from this person that had an asthma attack and died. Well, cha-ching bitch. There's your answer. Fucking take that needle. <laughs> but she doesn't trust it. She freaks out. She gets scared. And the other side of it is even if, you're not sure, even if you don't trust. Pick the fucking syringes up and either use the tip of your finger or your fucking clothes or something and squeeze out just a drop of each of the syringes and see which one starts to melt shit. Throw that fucking thing away and inject yourself with the other two. So I don't know. Again, I know it's easy to be a Monday morning quarterback on situations like this when your panic and your your mental state would be very different in the moment. But that's one where it's just like, come on. Come on, that's a gimme. That's an easy one. It's a fucking layup. Now we have the leg wires. And uh, while I like what it means for the character that it happens to, because he's the biggest asshole of the entire group and he has to actually endure pain himself to save the others, I like that side of it. 
it's so fucking reliant on convenience. Like this one actually, I think tops the the glass case from Saw Five at the end of Saw Five. It just things need to work out perfectly for this thing to to work this way. So Jigsaw, in his endless prophecy is able to foresee that this guy's not going to listen to the rules. He's going to go up this little stairway. He's going to step in this one exact perfect spot that's going to give away and latch his legs. And then the other two are going to go into this room and he's going to be forced to sever his legs. It's pretty stupid. So I'm going to put that one also when you call that a test. It's the CGI when it does take off his legs and it just looks like these little sushi coins is pretty fucking lame. So you don't even get like the carnage satisfaction of it. And I just got to call bullshit on the logic of that one. That's just too much for me. Now we have the grain silo in Jigsaw. And, you know, this one, it's unfortunately tied to the leg wires to where I don't really know what would the trap have been if all three of them had just went into the silo. Like, what would the trap have been then? I'm, I'm not sure. But I at least like the visual of it. It was one of the more memorable parts of the trailer. So I'm going to put it in Forever Scarred. It's probably going to end up near the bottom of that one. But uh, them being stuck while this thing fills up and just sharp objects are coming down. And it's only by chance that it didn't fucking impale both of them in the head in two seconds. But it's at least a cool visual that you could see them freaking the fuck out. You can't move and shit's just following, falling. That, that's pretty terrifying. Now we have the cycle trap where it's the, the upside down spiral and the guy has to reach all the way through it and grab the brake of the motorcycle to stop the whole thing. This one aggravates the fuck out of me because to me, it's very winnable. Even without the other chick intervening, which she does, and the dumbass doesn't capitalize on it. She fucking intervenes. She sticks this thing into the, the motorcycle spoke and stops the thing. And he doesn't take that time to be like, oh, shit, let me grab it while the fucking thing's not working. He just sits there like, oh, appreciate it, girl. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so what are you doing after this? You want to get something? To drink? Oh, shit. Yeah, it broke. Now I'm fucked again. And even when it's spinning, maybe it wouldn't be by the way that they shot it. It seemed like if he just stayed still and kept his shoulders tight and just had his hand there as it descended. He could have got it and it's just very carefully don't panic. Don't move around. It, it seemed winnable to me, but I did like the carnage when he lost, you know, dude getting turned into fucking chop suey. The shotgun keys for the scene where we get the little bit of jigsaw in jigsaw. Um, this one's not so memorable as a trap, but it's very memorable for the riddle. The jigsaw gives so i'm putting it in forever scarred essentially you have jigsaw that says yeah you're both shit bags you get the reveal that the lead woman actually smothered her child which really really made her me want to see her just just die violently and, and viciously like stick her in the fucking rack next please moving on you have the shotgun keys to where jigsaw said holds the key up and he says this is the key to your survival and he puts it inside of the shotgun shell and he gives him just enough information that much like the people in Saw 5, if you just work together and you don't panic and try to turn on each other in two seconds, then you'll have your freedom. But the baby killing bitch panics, grabs the shotgun, points it at the other guy, shoots it and it explodes and blows off half of her face deservedly. And dooms the other guy to death because it was the key was inside the shotgun shell and now it's mangled and it's unusable and now he's just going to be tethered there to die like the like Adam in the bathroom trap. So not the most interesting trap, but I like the riddle. I like the scene that you get with Jigsaw and there's a bit of satisfaction with seeing her get her face blown off with you know the context that we're given of why she's there. <sighs> Top five of this franchise of people that deserve to die. Now you have the finale of Jigsaw, the laser collar. And, you know, there's a lot of complicated thoughts on there, uh, out there about this trap and this, uh, this whole sci-fi angle that this movie ends on. And there's a part of me that likes it, that it felt like it was kind of moving into a new generation. And there's a part of me that does feel like it's a little bit too over the top for this franchise. It's always felt a little bit more analog, I guess, for lack of a better word. So I, I'm mixed on it. I'm going to put it in Forever Scarred because I at least, even though it's CGI as fuck, I at least like the visual that you get. 
So you have the reveal of Logan as the new Jigsaw apprentice, and he essentially has the detective that led to his wife's death in this trap that is unwinnable. Actually, you know what? Fuck. It's unwinnable. I got to put it down and breaking the rules. <laughs> I'm forgetting my own rules. I'm breaking my own damn rules. So yeah, it goes in breaking the rules. <laughs> Forget everything I just fucking said about Forever Scarred. So it's an unwinnable trap that's meant to just be an execution. And you have these laser cutters that he used earlier on in the movie for a surgical forensic purpose. And they just click, 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 get closer to this guy's face. And then they cut him and then they go off and he hits down. And even though it's CGI as hell, I at least like the sick visual. It almost looks like a fucking Demogorgon mouth where his head just splits open into like eight different pieces that's a pretty neat death. So I, I don't hate the the laser collar like some people. It's not going to be at the bottom of my breaking the rules ranking here in a few minutes. Now we're at Spiral. And we're moving through these. We're at like, what, an hour and 20? Okay, never mind. No, we're not. Subway Trap. So what I like about Spiral is that they really try to go back to having a strong thematic element to their traps. So quite a few of these traps are going to be a lot higher for me than most people. The Subway Trap. Kill me now. I mean, there is an argument to be made that he could have just bit off his tongue or he could have used the razor wire that was around his wrist to cut off his tongue. He didn't actually have to have it ripped out like from the base of the muscle, but he didn't have very much time to make his decision. That's the one thing that the killer in Spiral is a bit of a dick, just like with Jigsaw is the, the amount of time that he gives these people is kind of an asshole move. But nonetheless, thinking about getting thrown in front of a train and in order to escape, you have to sever your tongue. That is fucked up. That is gnarly. And no matter what way, I mean, it, you think about how painful it would be to take your eyes out. You think about how bad it would be to have to sever your own tongue. Like, it's just that that's, again, simple, but gruesome. So I like that one quite a bit. The finger trap from Spiral, where you get the detective that murdered somebody. I think it was a kid uh, for just pissing him off. And so he's in this trap where he's in a bathtub and he has these things tethered to his fingers and he has to bite down on this thing to have this machine slowly rip his fingers off. And only after he has all of his 10 fingers severed, is he able to get out of this bathtub to avoid getting electrocuted aside from a little bit of a question that I have of before he starts to tighten his fingers, is he not able to just get out of the bathtub? Because I didn't see anything where his feet were like shackled anywhere and after he loses his fingers isn't he supposed to just get out of the fucking tub anyway so that's one small little logic question that i have with it but if we're ignoring that having your fingers ripped off or chopped off is bad enough having them slowly yanked off and i mean slowly slow as fuck just slowly pulled from the joint the visuals that they give the gore oh so this is another one that it goes up to kill me now. Again, I'm a fan of Spiral. I like that movie. I think the traps are pretty fucking awesome. Now we have the wax trap. And while this one is just on the pain level of the other two, I kind of call bullshit on whether this trap is even winnable. So I'm actually going to stick this one in breaking the rules because it just doesn't feel like it makes any sense as far as how she's actually supposed to get out of this. So she's strapped to this table. Her neck is on like this razor blade and she has this thing placed over her face and molten hot wax is being poured onto her face. And it, the trap will supposedly stop if she severs her spine. The little flashes that we get of that blade doesn't seem like it's near enough to sever her spine. And what is she supposed to do? Is she supposed to like wiggle her neck and slowly cut into it? Is she supposed to slam her head backwards onto it? It's never very clear. And so that one always felt a little more vengeful to me, a little less winnable. So I, I, was, uh, I was debating on putting it in forever scarred because the pain level of that one is so fucked up. But I just, the way that they shot it, it genuinely doesn't look like a trap that anybody could win. So it's not as definitive as some of the others in this list where it's just very obvious. You're fucked. There's no winning it. That one to me, it just doesn't seem possible. Now we have the glass grinder where you have the detective that killed the father of who is eventually revealed to be the killer. And it's kind of a, it's a trap for him, but it's a test for Chris Rock's character to where he has to get this key out from underneath this trash can and save him in time. 
as these glass bottles are put into this grinder and shot out like shrapnel at this dude's back. This one's pretty memorable. It's not nearly as interesting as the other ones, and there's also an element of it being kind of unwinnable unless Chris Rock figures it out, which he figures it out too late, but I do like that one. So that one's going to go in Forever Scarred. And now we have Marcus Banks, the puppet trap test in the very end of Spiral, Samuel Jackson's test. And this one, again, I don't, I've watched Spiral three times and I still don't completely understand the different scenarios at play at the very tail end of that movie. He tells Chris Rock, there's only one bullet left in that gun, so you can use it on me or you can shoot that target and free your dad. Well, he shoots the target, he frees his dad, and then people start to come in, they cut the wire, which hoists his dad up, makes it look like he's drawn a gun, and gets him shot to death. So I don't know if there was ever a scenario in that to where Samuel Jackson was going to live. It doesn't feel like there was. And I don't know if it's there's maybe an argument out there that because Chris Rock starts assaulting the killer, that he lets Samuel Jackson die as punishment for that, but it always felt like that was going to be an inevitable one, so I'm going to stick it and break in the rules. Just like with the wax trap, but even more definitively, that seems like one that Samuel Jackson was done for no matter what. But I do like the visual of it, especially where they they match it up with that pig marionette. That was pretty cool. Now we're on to Saw X. We're in the stretch, the final stretch, baby, of this long-ass video that I'm filming at 1230 at night, and... Oh, man, I'm going to have a dry, dry mouth by the end of this one from just talking so, so much. The eye vacuum, the one that was advertised the most, the one that's on the poster and creates the little X, the one that most people were really looking forward to and speculating what the trap was going to be. And this one, just like the pain train in Saw 3D, is actually a dream sequence. It, it, it's a premonition it's jigsaw visualizing something in his head so he sees this uh, janitor or somebody this nurse in the hospital that he is in getting his testing done go through the belongings of somebody who is in a hospital bed asleep and starts to take his watch and take his money and jigsaw sees him and then it flashes forward to this guy being in a trap to where his fingers are tethered there's a little knob and he has these little suction tubes on his eyes. And so he has to snap back all of his fingers, breaking them backwards. Otherwise, it's going to suck his eyeballs out of his skull. Now, if this wasn't a dream sequence and it wasn't shot nearly as well, I would stick this and you call that a test because while, of course, it's going to suck to break your fingers, that's one of the easiest traps ever to survive. First of all, just be a man and turn the fucking thing all the way over. Quit doing that one at a time shit for the sake of editing and tension. But, you know, having your fingers bent backwards and broken and that's the worst that's going to happen to you. That's fixable. <laughs> you know, you go to the hospital that you fucking work at. And in a couple of weeks, you probably are going to have mobility back. Nonetheless, the fact that uh, he loses and you get the visuals of the eyes getting sucked out of the vacuum and then the, the little switcheroo that it pulls where it flashes back and it's just jigsaw visualizing that in his head. Then the guy sees him looking and makes the right decision and goes out and you get that great dark comedy moment where jigsaw goes, good choice. That all added up saves this one so this one for me goes into forever scarred and that was one of my favorite moments of saw x i've seen some people bitch at the fact that it's a dream sequence and i guess i understand that to me i love the way they executed that now we have the pipe bomb trap so after we get through the first you know half of the movie and we get all of these assholes together that fucked over john kramer and one by one we're going through these traps the first one we get to is i believe this was the guy that was like the transport uh, that, that acted like a cabbie that got him there to, to be screwed over by these people. He has these pipe bombs that are attached to his arms. His hands are all taped up. All he has is syringes, and they are actually tethered into the muscles of his arms. So he has to cut open his flesh and, like, cut the wires of this thing to get it off of his arms. And he's victorious. He's one of the few traps in the entire franchise where the guy is victorious. So it's memorable because of that. As a trap, it's not necessarily the most memorable, certainly not among the most memorable in this movie. So it's only going to make it up to forever scarred for me. But I like the fact that he has somebody that survives and he sticks to his word where he's like, hey, good work. Here's your fucking keys. 
Head on. Don't do this shit anymore. You learn your lesson, bitch. Now we move on to the wire saw trap. Uh, a lot of people are probably going to call it the bone marrow trap, which is a better name. I didn't name these. And this one is absolutely going up to game over for me because, oh, oh, man. Like, why? <laughs> I understand, and we're going to talk about it when we get to the gas chamber. I understand with the future plans for the character of Cecilia, why she didn't get this trap. But the person that deserves to be punished the most should have been stuck in this fucking thing. This chick drew the short straw to get this trap. So she is put into this device to where there is this square of razor wire that is going to decapitate her if she does not use this wire saw to take off her leg and then stick this suction tube into her severed femur and suck out the bone marrow. So she severs her leg and just fucking mans up and does this and takes her entire leg off takes this suction tube, sticks it right into the cavity of the bone, and it sucks out the blood and the bone marrow into this thing to where there's like this little strainer, so the blood falls through and the bone marrow just slowly collects. And she's just barely too late, which really seems really fucking unfair for the amount of shit that she went through. I, Jigsaw should have just been like, oh, god damn. Oh, yeah, you learned your lesson. Never mind. Fuck the timer. You win. Get out. Get out. But no, she loses by five seconds or so. But my God, just talk about one of the most painful traps in this entire franchise. Like it's enough to sever off your leg, but now you got to stick something in your fucking bone and sit there and wait and pray that you've got enough bone marrow in that bitch to hopefully fill it up. And then she gets her head taken off. So it's it's definitely the, the gnarliest trap of Saw X in my mind. Very close second, though. Very close second is the brain surgery, which is going right up to kill me now. This is one where I did the logic of it. Hurts a little bit, but it's still memorable enough to make it up to kill me now. I don't feel like anybody could do this. Uh, I understand that there's no pain receptors in the brain. So pulling out a piece of your brain is not going to be like a, 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 something that's too agonizing to do. But essentially what he is told to do is he has to use this little bone saw to cut open a section of his skull. And he has to pull off a piece of brain and put it into this this acid solution, and it's supposed to be, if there's enough mass of brain there, it will free him from this trap. Otherwise, this little Aztec mask is going to close on him and melt him. First of all, how the fuck is he supposed to know how much brain matter to throw in there? He doesn't get that information. But when you're pulling out chunks of your brain, like, how the fuck did he know that he's not going to, like, pull out his motor skills or something, or fucking pull out his cognitive thinking? Like, he just rips it out and like, like <laughs> that's the first thing I thought of was going to be funny is like if he pulls it out and it's just like it's like Terminator 2 when they pull the fucking chip out and he just gets locked nonetheless we'll forgive the logic for the sake of the gore he throws the brain in it's not enough he loses he dies so uh, yeah that one's a pretty gnarly one that was one that was pretty heavily marketed in the trailers so uh, now we have the radiation therapy trap which uh, I mean, this one I thought was kind of weak, to be honest with you. Um, it, it's one of the least offensives, but I'm going to throw it and you call that a test because, I mean, first of all, this girl is the most innocent of all of them. And there's a reason that they kind of really hone in on that because it has to do with Amanda's storyline and how she views all of this and the ultimate tragedy of what happens to this character after she escapes from this trap. But she's tethered with one arm and her leg and she has this a uh, radiation beam that is going to be basically cooking her like a hot dog unless she uses a hammer and just bashes her bones enough to free herself from her arm and her leg. And Cecilia is like, do your leg first because then you'll swing out of the way of the thing when clearly the better option is to get your hand off because then you're going to hit the floor and God forbid if the thing moves, you can at least juke the fucking thing and move around a little bit instead of just being suspended in one spot. And maybe you can... Find something else to hit the hammer with. Nonetheless, she listens to dumbass Cecilia and she frees her leg. She swings out of the way and then the radiation beam moves with her and she continues to get cooked until she bashes her hand and she actually survives her trap for a few minutes. So, I mean, it, it doesn't seem like, again, it's easy to Monday quarterback these things, but to me, if she would have taken her hand first, it wouldn't have been that 
bad of an experience. Not nearly as bad as it was the way that she did. And uh, compared to the other ones, she got the, the better end of the deal for sure. So not the most memorable to me, but it is what it is. Now we have the blood boarding trap, the trap that was originally intended for Cecilia and her lover. But uh, because of a certain chain of events, uh, they get the drop on Jigsaw and Amanda and uh, this little kid who he helped earlier on in the movie to fix his bike wheel shows up unexpected. And she forces John and this child into this trap that is essentially like a teeter totter. And they're getting waterboarded with blood. And there's this lever. If you pull the lever, it tips it in your favor. And you're the one who's going to be enduring the blood all over your face and the drowning simulation. And if the other person pulls it, then it swaps and they start to endure it. So clearly it was originally intended for Cecilia and her lover to test who is trying to save the other one. Cause it's all about trying to take the blunt to save somebody else. Uh, but because of the chain of events, it becomes a test for John and this kid. And it's a badass sequence because first of all, you never see jigsaw as a part of his own trap. So that was unique. Second of all, it shows the, Despite all the horrific things that he has done, it, it really gets you onto the camp of feeling like he's the hero of the story because it shows him trying to save this child. It even shows how badass this kid is where the kid's trying to take some of the blunt of it to save John. And he's like, no holla, no holla and pulls it. So I thought that sequence was pretty fucking awesome. So I'm going to stick it in forever scarred. Um, it's not like memorable enough for it to be kill me now. It's just a really cool sequence. It's one of the, the, the better sequences in the movie as far as John's character arc. Uh, then we have the gas chamber, the, the final major trap. And this one's fucking lame. Like, let's just be honest. So I'm going to put it in. You call that a test. I did not hate the ending of Saw X, but I can understand a lot of people being disappointed with it. It helped that I got to hear a Q and a immediately afterwards and hear the writers of the movie talk about the plans for the future. And this climax of Saw X is either going to go up or down, depending on how they follow this up. It's a situation that's very convenient to keep Cecilia alive for future movies, which the only disappointment with that is she's such a despicable character and they do such a good job at making you despise her character that it's not uh, completely satisfying to see how easy her trap is. So because they didn't endure the bloodboarding trap, which was all about taking the pain to save the other person, they get into the gas chamber trap, which is all about you have to kill the other person so that you're the survivor. And as Jigsaw and Amanda knew, she didn't give a fuck about that dude. So she kills him while this corrosive gas is filling this room and she sticks her head through the hole and she's going to be the survivor. And that's the last that we see of her as John and Amanda limp their way out of this warehouse. And then we get to the end of the movie. So as an ending to this movie, it's not the most interesting trap whatsoever. And it feels painfully easy for somebody as despicable as Cecilia. As I said, she deserved to have the wire saw trap or the bone marrow trap, but for whatever reason, he gives her the easy out, which again, I like how that's going to continue to color out um, that missing piece of Amanda's storyline where she goes from loyal apprentice to vengeful murderer. And I'm very interested to see how they expand on her character and how Cecilia is going to return as this main antagonist for Jigsaw. I am 100% bought in on all of that. But it's a pretty fucking lame trap for somebody who is such a bad antagonist. So it's going to go and you call it a test because like, I mean, as long as you're not stuck in a room with somebody you genuinely love, that's a pretty fucking easy win. Now we have the last one, uh, the disembowelment trap from the mid credit scene of Saw X. And while this thing looks gnarly as fuck, and it's a character that you, some people probably forgot about throughout the runtime of the movie, like, oh, yeah, that guy was probably in on it. Um, it's one that you don't get to see the aftermath. You just get to kind of see the beginning of it where he was supposedly was supposed to have this gnarly scar to where they did this experimental surgery to save him from his cancer. And it was a big fake. He was somebody who's a pawn to try to get John into the, the grasp of all these people. And so essentially they put this trap on him where it is going to cut open his stomach the way that he said it was. So it was an interesting little tease uh, it's not one that offends me, uh, but because we don't really get to see any of it, it's going to go and you call that a test because it's just it's a tease. And, and that's all, it's all it's supposed to be. It's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. it. It serves its purpose. But in a list full of traps that we get to see 
both the trap being <laughs> or both the, the test being ran as well as the aftermath. This is one that's just a tease. So going to have to stick it in there just because that's where it goes. All right, guys, now we have reached the finale, the final section of this tier list ranking. We have all 75, what, 78, excuse me. God damn, there's a lot of these traps. <laughs> all 78 traps categorized into these five tiers. Now I have them arranged from my least favorite all the way up to my favorite. So let's talk about that now and wrap this thing up. Starting with you call that a test. Bear Trap 3.0, probably my least favorite trap in the entire franchise for the tease that we have endured for seven movies to finally see somebody go through that test. And that's the person you choose to do it. Leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And then we have a bunch of lame ones. Shotgun Chair, Explosive Puppet, Suspended Cage, not interesting at all. Jess Final Test, didn't learn anything. Don't care about him anymore. Knife Chair, Shoddy Workmanship by Jigsaw. Wisdom Teeth, eh, pretty weak. Leg Wires, too much convenience. Spine Cutters, Big Dick Tease, don't get to see what that's for. I don't understand why that guy's in the test anymore. Gas Chamber, not the most interesting way to end Saw X. Pain Train, we all hate dream sequences. Chain Hangers and Hangman's Noose are kind of along the same, where it's like that should have been easily winnable, but for some reason you fucked around and lost. Electric Bathtub and Impalement Wheel, again, they're, they're okay. They feel like they should have been easily won. Drill Chair, not much to say about that one. Razor Box, She's stupid. Lawnmower trap is too brief to care about. Glass coffin, again, a lot of convenience with that one, but I at least like the visual. Bucket room, interesting way to start, but a very easy trap. Radiation therapy, should have been an easier trap to win, but it, it's one of the least interesting of that movie, at least. Cycle trap, I love the gore when the dude loses, but again, two different ways that that could have been very easy to win, and he fucks up. The furnace, love the visual of the dude being trapped in there, but it seems like it should have been very survivable. And then the disembowelment trap, just I'm going to put it at the top because I at least like the potential of that one. And I like the visual of that one the most, but it's a glorified tease. So, you know, that one and the furnace and cycle trap, any three of those could be at the top of that category for me. And I'd be pretty comfortable with that one. Moving on to breaking the rules, a bunch of traps that are unwinnable. You have the sentry gun trap, the cyanide box and the electric staircase uh, that are all just there to take out cops that are doing their job. So not much interesting to say about them. They're all pretty lame. Zepp's test, never really understood the logic with that one, so it's never been that standout for me. Amanda's test could be very compelling if they didn't retcon it and put the whole thing in there about Hoffman blackmailing her and forcing her to lose her test. I think that makes that whole segment of that movie worse. You have shotgun collar. She doesn't deserve to be there, but it's at least a cool gore sequence at the end. Steam maze is a really cool trap, but I just hate that extra little nugget in there. To me, it breaks the logic of that entire room. Acid Room, a lot of gnarly gore in that one, but again, makes it very unwinnable for the protagonist and seems like Jigsaw wanted to kill him. Shotgun Hallway, killing more cops, but at least there's more of a memorable visual to that one than the three I have at the bottom here. Flammable Jelly, I like the visual of it. Again, they were still figuring out the formula with the first movie, but it's unwinnable. There's no fucking way that guy would have got out of there unless he was extremely lucky and he needs to go and pay, play the lottery immediately. Water Cube, cool visual for the poster, unwinnable, not the most interesting trap. Now we're into the more interesting ones with Laser Collar. Again, I know people feel like this is a little bit too over the top, but at least I like the visual, whether it's CGI or not. And it felt like a newer era of Jigsaw movies, and we're going to have more intricate traps with futuristic stuff in there, but <laughs> didn't receive very well. So now we're back to the analog stuff, as it probably should be. The Brazen Bull, it's very stomach churning to have an innocent woman burned alive in here, but at least it's a gnarly as fuck trap. And I like the poetry in there, the poetic justice of him having to endure what he told everybody he already endured. Marcus Banks, this is basically just because of the visual. I think the visual of him getting strung up and pulling the shotgun up and then cutting it with the pig marionette is actually really cool. Pendulum Trap, I like a little Edgar Allan Poe flavor in there, which if you're watching this, if you have not seen Fall of the House of Usher, watch the Fall of House of Usher. Classroom Trap, again, very cool, although extremely unwinnable in two different ways, but gnarly as fuck, dude, just pulling hooks out of himself. The Wax Trap, one of the most painful traps in this entire franchise, but I just highly, highly call into question whether it was actually winnable. And the top of this one for me is the Angel Trap. It actually kind of pained me not to put that in Kill Me Now, because that's absolutely where it would be, but because it's unwinnable, it had to go in here, but it's the best of all of the unwinnable traps easily. Now we're into Forever Scarred. And starting at the bottom, we got the Magnum Eye Hole, just a, another way to add gore, just add body count. It's not really that interesting. The Ceiling Jars and the Necktie Trap, you could really interchange those for me. They're not very interesting. It's very obvious that they should work together, but these dumb fucks can't figure that out. 
the grain silo. I like the visual. It worked well in the trailer in the actual context of the movie. Not as interesting as it could be, but nonetheless, cool enough. Oxygen Crusher. I like the little bit of survivor's guilt that's going to be in there. But again, it feels like it's very much rigged. There's no way. So he's just if he dies right there, it's kind of the same question as the steam maze. It's like, OK, he has to live. Otherwise, your entire plot is fucked. So I don't know. That one might have should have been in breaking the rules to a certain degree, but he can get through it. Pipe bomb trap and saw X. I like the fact somebody lives. It's just weak compared to the other traps in that movie. It's not its fault. Shotgun keys. I like the little line that Jigsaw gives there. His little his little riddle. I like when he gets clever with his words. Freezer room. Cool visual. I like the the blue hue that it gives. You know, and the freezing to death sucks. It's not one of the more painful ones in this franchise, but it's something different. That's why I like it. The gallows. I like the whole. Uh, thematic element in there where he has to swap his typical philosophy. Ten pints, that's the most interesting of those traps in Saw 5, and unfortunately, because they fucked up, it's going to be a very painful trap for them. Ice block trap, more of a visual thing for me. Scalping seat, uh, glass grinder, razor wire maze, these are all that are just painful and interesting to watch. Mausoleum, eh, you know, that, that call into question whether or not that was fairly set up for those two gentlemen is very much pushed into the side of the, the guy who had his lips sewn shut, but it's still a cool way to kick that movie off for how dull of a movie it is. Public execution. I've already talked about it. I get some sick enjoyment out of this one just because of the real life implications of love triangles and cheating and all that. It's just, I don't know. I, I Maybe I'm fucked up, but that one's kind of funny to me. The bloodboarding trap. You get to see Jigsaw endure one of his own traps. That's a lot of fun. Bathroom trap. It's the OG. A lot of people probably negate that to game over just because it's the OG. I'm not one of them, obviously, but... It's one of the more intricate traps in the franchise. The eye vacuum, whether or not it's a dream sequence or not, I love the way that they implement implemented that. I thought it was a very funny moment and it kicked the movie off in a really, really good tone for me that set up the rest of my enjoyment. And I actually think it's a pretty gnarly looking trap, whether it's very easy to survive or not, and not really that much implications for it. Visually, they win me over to where I forgive all that. And at the top, we have the shotgun carousel. I'm not overly enamored with Saw 6 like some people, but that is a very badass trap to look at. Whether or not morally, it's kind of fucked up that you negate three people to dying no matter what he chooses. Again, we can do a whole video talking about the logic of the morals and, and how these traps are supposed to be one or not. But nonetheless, we have that as the top for Forever Scarred. Now with Kill Me Now, my bottom is the spike trap. It's the least interesting of those by a landslide. I just really like the thematic element of it, of her freeing herself from her abuser. I think that that's one of the best written traps. Whether or not they executed it in the most gnarly way possible, we can debate that, but it's not always about the gore for me. Bear Trap 2.0, love the visual of Hoffman tearing his face open. It is a derivative trap. I do like the, the more rusted look of the trap, so it's not as good as the OG for me. Pound of Flesh, that chick is badass. That's all I got to say. He just she committed horsepower trap as much as saw 3D is a lot of quantity over quality. This is actually one that is quantity and quality all in one trap. So I dig that the pig vat most disgusting trap in this entire franchise, the silent circle that competes with a couple of the ones like in the rack and a few others where it's like, oh, my God, that's the most painful thing I could ever imagine. You're a sick fuck for writing that one subway trap for spiral kicked off the movie with a bang. And I think it's one of the cooler looking traps, one of the gnarlier looking traps of the franchise. Brain surgery, that's again competing for one that's like, holy shit, could any human person actually endure that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to find out. But it was heavily in the trailer for a reason. It's a pretty fucked up trap. Bedroom trap, not only is it gnarly, but you get the sick satisfaction of seeing somebody who deserves that pain. Finger trap is my favorite of those. I think that the visuals, the way that they executed it, the way that it's just so painfully slow, it's agonizing to watch. And that's what that trap should be for the themes that they were going for with why all those detectives were in those traps. And now we're in the top tier and you can stop hearing me talk here very soon. <laughs> Game over, baby. Wire saw trap, also known as the bone marrow trap, is the bottom of that one. Uh, I just don't feel like that character should be in that trap, but if we're going to get some sick enjoyment out of it, that trap is sick as fuck. Nerve gas house, one of the best written, most intricate traps in this entire franchise. Needle pit, whether or not it is on par and the pain level of more than three quarters of these traps, probably not, but it's still 
some of the most wincing and gut churning thing that you're going to see in this franchise and one of if not the most talked about trap in the franchise death mask or more lovingly known as the venus fly trap kicks off saw two with a bang to me that's easily the second most memorable visual next to the one i'm about to talk about now the reverse bear trap it's the signature trap of saw love it and then we have the rack which is and probably always will be my favorite trap in this franchise. It is the most painful looking. It is the most gut wrenching. It is the most nausea inducing. And it just, oh, I, that is the one trap on this entire list to where if they gave me a choice, like you, we're going to put you in one of these, but we'll give you one vote of one that you do not want to go in the rack. I don't even need to think about it. Give me the fucking wire saw trap with the damn the bone marrow. I'll go through that all day before I go through the rack. So that one for all of saw three's flaws, that is the standout moment of that movie. And one of the most standout moments of this franchise. And it is my favorite trap in the franchise. Well, that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed that very long, very exhausting video. Please check over here for all of my 2023 new release reviews so far. I'm also going to put my playlist of all of my Saw reviews. I've covered every single film in this franchise. Please like, share, hit that subscribe button, and be sure to check out Raycon down in the video description below. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.